In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Amen. Good evening to everyone joining us for Mass at home this evening. Hoping you're all well. I'm offering this Mass for the people of the parish. Today in America, they're marking the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. I discovered this afternoon that there is a link between our parish here and the terrorist attacks. I'm not sure who the parish priest was over 20 years ago, but they were apparently looking for a new oak clock cross to go on the tower. And apparently they went to a forest in Mostyn in North Wales. And apparently they had chopped down this particular tree on the day of the terrorist attacks and they thought that nobody would want it because of the day on which it was chopped down. But apparently the priest here said no that would, actually it would be a perfect day and so apparently the wooden cross, the oak cross that you can see on the tower outside uh, was actually chopped down on the day of the 9-11 terrorist attacks so it's also a kind of memorial to what happened on that terrible day. The Gospel today reminds us that Jesus asks us to deny ourselves, to take up our cross and to follow him. As we begin our celebration, we pause to ask for Christ's mercy and for the strength to take up his call. Lord Jesus, you are the servant of God who suffered for our sake. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Christ Jesus, you are the Messiah who brings salvation. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to follow you. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. In the first reading this evening we hear again from Isaiah at the time of the Babylonian exile around 550 BC. It's, this text is chosen today to reflect the Gospel and Jesus' own prophecy of his passion and death. These passages from Isaiah are also used immediately before Easter, for the story of the suffering servant mirrors closely that of Jesus himself. Ever clear and direct, in the second reading, St. James takes on the problem of faith and good deeds. His argument is easy to follow, but it's just as easy to misinterpret, because faith itself can be open to all sorts of self-delusion. Faith is God-given, but it only becomes real in our lives when put into practice by good works for the sake of others. St. James had obviously encountered people of a Pharisee mentality who believed that God gave them faith as a personal gift for their own salvation. Such people still exist today, and St. James urges us to reflect if we are one of them.
A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. My vindicator is here at hand. Does anyone start proceedings against me? Then let us go to court together. Who thinks he has a case against me? Let him approach me. The Lord is coming to my help. Who dares condemn me? The word of the Lord. Response to the psalm. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I love the Lord, for he has heard the cry of my appeal, for he has turned his ear to me in the day when I called him. They surround me, the snares of death, with the anguish of the tomb. They, they caught me sorrow and distress. I called on the Lord's name. O Lord, my God, deliver me. How gracious is the Lord and just, our God has compassion. The Lord protects the simple hearts, I was helpless, so he saved me. He has kept my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. James. Take the case, my brothers, of someone who has <coughs> never done a single good act but claims that he has faith. Will that faith save him? If one of the brothers or one of the sisters in need of clothes and has not enough food to live on, and one of you says to him, I wish you well, keep yourself warm and eat plenty, Without giving them these bare necessities of life, then what good is that? Faith is like that. If good works do not go with it, it is quite dead. This is the way to talk to people of that kind. You say you have faith and I have good deeds. I will prove to you that I have faith by showing you my good deeds. Now you prove to me that you have faith without any good deeds to show. The word of the Lord. Stand for the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah. 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 I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. Hallelujah. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left for the villages round Caesarea Philippi. On the way he put this question to his disciples, who do people say I am? And they told him, John the Baptist they said, others Elijah, others again Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But who do, you, who do you say I am? Simon Peter spoke up and said to him, You are the Christ. And he gave them strict orders not to tell anyone about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man was destined to suffer grievously, to be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and to be put to death, and after three days to rise again. And he said all this quite openly. Then taking him aside, Peter started to, re to remonstrate with him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. 
He called the people and his disciples to him and said, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it. But anyone who loses his life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A while ago, the bishops of England and Wales launched a website called The Art of Dying Well. It was relaunched as a response to the fact that as a society, we don't deal with death well. Given it's one of the few things of which we can be certain, death is a remarkably taboo subject. Some people may never have witnessed a death, or it might have been a traumatic one. Other times, people's expectations are wide of the mark for any number of reasons, or medical technology has progressed, so what people fear is no longer the case. It makes it very difficult to have conversations where fears can be allayed and the process explained if the topic of death remains taboo. This is despite that wherever we look around us, we're reminded of the natural pattern of dying and rising to new life. At the moment we're beginning autumn, the nights are drawing in, and soon the leaves will be falling from the trees, a necessary death for spring's new life. In the Gospel this evening, Jesus reminds us that death and new life are inextricably linked. The passage we've just listened to occurs immediately after Jesus had cured the blind man at Bethsaida, an event that reinforced the fact that Jesus' ministry is about life. But by his question to his disciples, Jesus indicates that this new life requires death. When Peter answers Jesus' questions with the words, you are the Christ, it's likely he had in mind someone like King David, who would restore Israel as a great nation, a not unreasonable assumption given the Messiah was to come from David's line. But instead, Jesus leads his followers to a teaching of what discipleship involves. The new life to which they look forward involved a great cost, and that was Jesus' passion and death. In the first reading, we hear of Isaiah's prophecy of the suffering servant, and it's clear that Jesus saw himself as the fulfilment of that prophecy. It's a fact of life that there must be death for new life to begin. When we were baptised, we were buried to ourselves and awoken to a new life. And just as it did for Jesus, so also for us, this requires a type of death. Yes, we're given the incomparable gift of eternal life, but that gift demands that we become like Jesus, dying to ourselves for others. The difficult lesson from today's scriptures is that if we want to share in the new life that Jesus came to bring, then we must imitate his example of self-sacrifice. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God is our help and upholds us, and so we are confident to ask for all we need. That all members of the church may faithfully follow Jesus, even when their difficulties and suffering seem overwhelming. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. That where leaders may respond to the needs of all people in their care. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. As the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attack is marked, we remember those who died and those who continue to suffer because of the events of that day. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. That those who cross of suffering seems unbearable may be strengthened by the supporting care of the Christian community. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. That each one of us here may grow in our conviction that accepting the cross is the path to new life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. In this moment of silence, we remember those needs kept in the quiet of our hearts. Loving God, you sent your Son to be our Messiah and Saviour. Be with us always as we try to follow him faithfully and come to eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Whilst the gifts of bread and wine are prepared, we'll sing hymn number 511, Take Our Bread. Take our bread, we ask you, take our hearts, we love Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favour on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offering, that what each has offered to the honour of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop, Tom and Tom his assistant bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just one correction to the newsletter. The Eucharistic service this coming week is on Tuesday, is on Wednesday evening at St. Philomena's, not on Tuesday evening. So that's a correction to the newsletter. Eucharistic service on Wednesday evening, not Tuesday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for Mass this evening, those of you here in church and those of you at home. I God bless. <laughs>